It's been said that once you have tasted flight, you will forever walk the earth with your eyes turned skyward. For there you have been, and there you will always long to return. Since the dawn of time, man has looked to the sky in bewilderment and dreamed of soaring among the clouds. Many of the early flying contraptions were piloted by aeronauts, as they were called, all pioneers who risked their lives in the pursuit of manned flight. Up, up, a little bit higher, oh, by the moon is on fire. Come, Josephine, in my flying machine, going up all on goodbye. This is the story of one of America's unknown aviation pioneers, John McDonald Miller. As a young boy, Johnny Miller's interest was to follow in his father's footsteps and become a steam locomotive engineer. But on May 29, 1910, four-year-old Johnny Miller witnessed something that would change his ambitions and set the course for the rest of his life. May 29th, 1910 was a big change in American history because it was the longest flight ever made in an airplane in the U.S., but also started the long career of John Miller in aviation. It was on that historic day that inventor Glenn Hammond Curtis landed his flying machine, a pusher plane he called the Hudson Flyer, in a field across the road from Johnny's home in Poughkeepsie, New York. The flying machines were a big curiosity. His father took him down there to see this unique airplane that had landed to be refueled, one of the two stops Curtis was allowed to make. The New York World made this offer of $10,000 for somebody to fly from Albany to New York in 1910, by October of 1910, um, and was allowed two stops. Where they were draining the gasoline out of a automobile and then pouring it in the airplane and I asked my father, why are they putting water in the, in the flying machine? He said, that's not water, that's called gasoline. That's what makes the engine run. <laughs> I remember that. From that moment on, John Miller forgot everything he knew about locomotives and just wanted to be a pilot. From heavy locomotives to light airplanes. <laughs> After World War I, the government sold many surplus jennies. The pilots who bought them came to be known as barnstormers or gypsy pilots and even flying fools. Well, the air's pretty bumpy up there. He's going to make it. No, he misses. No contact that time. Let's try again. You know, a stunt like this is just a matter of perfect coordination and fate is bound to determine that he's going to make it. In 1923, a barnstorming pilot named Swanee Taylor made his way to Poughkeepsie in a jenny in very poor condition. John worked in a machine shop during this time and would rush out to help Swanee, free of charge, to crank the propeller and do whatever Swanee needed John to do. It was soon evident to Swanee that John knew more about airplanes than he did. He was amazed that I knew how to fix a magneto and all kinds of things, and, and I, I maintained the airplane for him. He had been given an airplane by an earlier barnstormer. That was called a Jenny, JN4, World War I training plane. He abandoned the airplane. And said, you can have it. He walked away from it after he'd made, I don't know how many flights, taking people up at a dollar a flight. <laughs> it still had one dollar a flight painted on the side of 
the deteriorating fuselage when Dad took it over and rebuilt it. I fixed up anything that needed to be fixed and then I put it on new fabric. Big yep. job, boy, I had it on the porch here. Four wings and the fuselage, everything on the front porch. Painting them with dope. Some job, boy. He had reskinned it um, as necessary to, to fix holes in the wings. He worked on the engine and, and gotten it up to par to where, where he could taxi it around. Um, and it had a tail skid, so it was fairly hard to control on the ground. Uh, so he had decided that after after school every day he would go out to this field and he'd fire this thing up and cruise around the field. Well, I understood the operation of the airplane and I was able to hop it and fry it across over the grass and keep the wings level and keep it straight. And I turned around and go the other way. Here's a guy that wants to fly, can't wait, gets this airplane all fixed up and restored, and sure, there it is, what do you do? He started ferrying it trying it out back and forth across the field. So he's taxiing around in this Jenny and he throttled it up a little bit too far so he decided to just take off. Well, it's like uh, dad's car, you know, you want to learn to drive and they're away and you say, well, let me just take it down the driveway. Let me take it out on the road. Next thing you're on the highway and you don't have a license. So Johnny is going to say, well, I'm going to just taxi the airplane a little bit. Well, taxi a little bit more. This is pretty nice. Next thing you know, he's airborne. Well, yeah, I took her off and said, that's the way I learned to fly. I didn't have an instructor. I'm all a glitter and all a pearl. I'm all a glitter about a girl. I, I knew the principles of it. I didn't bust it. Didn't bust my neck either. <laughs> he flew down to uh, another field where he thought he would be able to land because the, the field he was actually in was pretty small. Of course, everybody, all the neighbors thought I was crazy. <laughs> so he landed there and uh, hung out there for a little while, just kind of in awe, I think, of that he just actually flew for the first time with, with no real professional training at all. And then he flew back to the field where he had started, and in landing, there was a local farmer that saw that he was flying this plane around there. And came over to the plane, he said, oh, a dollar a ride. It was still painted on the side of the fuselage. And Dad said, yes, a dollar a ride. So he took the farmer up for a ride. And on his first day flying, he became a commercial pilot. John's fondest memories are of flying his old Jenny in the days before regulations. There was complete freedom of the air, and he took advantage of it. John thoroughly enjoyed flying up into scattered fluffy clouds on a fine summer day and playing around in them. It was both fun and valuable experience. Johnny's a natural. I mean, he was born with wings and uh, has made such a wonderful career of that. But to, to me, uh, just to get in an airplane and go and just, well, okay, let's see what happens here, that's, that's the true adventurer.